Hey, what's up everyone? In this new tutorial, I am going to show you how to add a checkpoint system into Unity. As you can see, we have these checkpoints that we can trigger. And whenever we trigger a checkpoint, we are saving its position. So each time we lose, we are going to reload the level and put the player at that position. For example, in this case. So before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you don't miss my next videos. And let's jump right into it. So as you can see, we have the simple 2D platformer game and they can move. If you didn't watch my previous videos, go ahead and check them out. And in the previous one, we've added the game over screen. So whenever we collide with these obstacles, we have this game over screen and we can replay the game. But as you can see, the player is at the beginning of the level. We are going to add few checkpoints. And if our player touches one of the checkpoints, we are going to save its position. And then if we reload the game again, we are going to put it at that position. You see, it's very simple. First of all, let's add few checkpoints. I have this simple sprite. I'm going to use this one as the checkpoint. Let's drag it under the scene. Of course, you can't see it. Let's change the order a layer to 8. And let's place it in our level. For example, up here. Then let's add few more using Ctrl D. We can add another one. After that, we need to add some kind of collider to these checkpoints. So let's select all of these checkpoints and let's add a collider using add component and let's use a circle collider 2D. You could also change the size. For example, let's change the radius to 0.6. You could also move it. Also make sure to check its trigger. So we want our player to pass through the checkpoint and not collide with them like the enemies. And once he trigger one of the checkpoints, we are going to save its position. And to do that, we need to save it inside a variable. But the only problem is that whenever we reload a level, all of the variables are lost. And to solve that, we can declare a variable as static. So static variables can persist between levels. If you reload the level, the static variable will not be lost. So we need to create some kind of a variable under a script. And I'm going to use the player manager script. I've already created this player manager script to manage our game variables. Let's open it up. Then let's add a static variable, which is going to be the last checkpoint position using public then static and let's use a vector 2 because we are making a 2d game I'm gonna call it last checkpoint position after that we need to check if our player triggers one of the checkpoints we are going to change this variable to its position and to do that we are going to create a c-sharp script and attach it to all of the checkpoints so under the scripts folder let's right click create c-sharp script and let's call it checkpoint then let's attach it to all of these checkpoints and let's open it up in Visual Studio so let's get rid of the start and the update methods we don't need these and we are going to use a built-in function that is called onTriggerEnter so let's write onTrigger and we have the onTriggerEnter2D so this function is called whenever the player triggers the checkpoint in such case, we are going to check if it's the player using this collision variable. So let's use if collision dot transform dot tag. We are going to assign a player tag to our player. Then we can check if the tag equals the player. In such case, we are going to change the last checkpoint position variable using player manager. Then dot last checkpoint position equals the checkpoint position which is transform dot position and finally whenever we reload the level for example under the await function which is called whenever we reload the level again we are going to change the position of the player to the last checkpoint position but first we need to access it we can access a game object using its tag so let's use game object dot find object with tag so we have this built-in function 
and it's called find game object with tag we give it the tag which is player and it's gonna return that game object so we want to change the position using dot transform dot position equals the last checkpoint position and that's how we can add a simple checkpoint system into unity so let's save our script and don't forget to add a tag to the player so let's select our player and let's change the tag from untagged to the player tag and as you can see the x position of our player is minus 3 so we need to make sure that the position of the last checkpoint equals the starting position of our player using new vector2 and let's use minus 3 on the x and 0 on the y because if you leave it like that it's gonna take the default value which is 0 on the x and 0 on the y and that's going to move our player at the zero position so make sure to add that then let's save the script and let's hit play then I'm gonna go to one of the checkpoints like this one and let's try to die so if we replay the game you see that our player is starting from that checkpoint position and let's try to go to one of the others like this one so it's gonna select the last checkpoint that we have triggered and yeah it's working now we could improve this so let's try to do it basically I'm gonna change the color of the checkpoints so let's select all of these then under color I'm gonna change it to a darker color then whenever we trigger a checkpoint we are going to change the color to a white one and to do that it's very simple let's go back to the script then under the trigger function we are going to change the color of the sprite using get component and it's under the sprite renderer component dot color equals and we have this color variable dot white to select a white color and let's hit the play again and there you go so I think that's pretty much it for this video I hope you like it if you have any question or comment make sure to write it under the comment section down below also make sure to subscribe to my youtube channel and hit the bell icon i appreciate that and i will see you in the next one